There we go. Well, good morning, my cubs and my pride and joy, pride for pride of lions. And also now we are going to be um, audio on a live to roar on Anchor FM and Spotify. So welcome, Gavin Scott. I am so glad that you are here today. You've got so much going on. Um, I'm just real excited about this interview today, <laughs> getting some time to talk with you. Um, just kind of let people know a little bit about you. Um, we're going to talk about mindset today, which is a really big topic for me right now, because it's new, and I'm learning about it and the importance of it. And if people want to find you, they can find you at your web address, stayoutstanding.com, find you on Linktree, and on Instagram. Is there anywhere else they can find you? Find us on Facebook, you can find us on TikTok, uh, you can find us on Spotify. If you search hard enough, you'll find us. <laughs> but you won't have to search that hard. No, I didn't have to search hard at all. You're right there to stay outstanding. I love that title, by the way. That's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. So let's kind of get right into it. I know we're living on time. Um, you're joining us from Spain. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The south of Spain, the Costa del Sol. Awesome. Uh, yeah, it was a lifestyle choice. Ah. So people are always telling me, how do you lead the life you live? How, you know, I can't move to Spain. I'd like to. But the reality is anybody can. Mm -hmm. You just have to make a conscious choice and take action. So it might not happen overnight. It might not happen at the click of a fingers. But, you know, you can make things happen. And it's all about mindset, basically. Knowing about what you want also. What yeah. do you want in life? Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us. And I actually have some friends in Spain and we can talk about that later. Um, so let's see. You can help us learn to widen the lens of perspective to create a space of betterment in our lives. What, do, what does that statement mean? Okay. So you said that you're particularly focused on mindset at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, I will use you as my guinea pig if you don't mind. What is it Go that you're it. trying to focus on? <laughs> well, I found out that a lot of things that I have heard throughout my life affect the way I think, the mm -hmm. way I react or act or do things. And I have control over that. And I didn't know that before. I didn't know that there was a choice I could make in who I am, that I don't have to stay who I am. Not that there's anything wrong with me, per se, but I want different things in life than what I have at the moment. And one way to get started with that is to change what's going on in here so I can change what's going on out here. Would you be vulnerable enough to share a specific example with us? <laughs> Sure. <laughs> Look out, people. Here it comes. <laughs> um, so uh, February of 2020, just after COVID hit, my husband got injured at work and he had to not work <laughs> and go through surgery, go through recovery. And during his recovery, while he was at physical therapist, nothing against the physical therapist. You know, you just, you try to get your patient to do all that they can but whatever happened it retore what was in there and there wasn't enough to fix it so now two and a half years later um, he's looking for a different job he separated from that company uh, still on disability disability dropped our income way down our income is really low and I want to do something to change that I can't just go out and get a job, even though I have a degree. I have ADHD and I have it at a level that I don't understand the workplace. Great for being an entrepreneur, great for writing, which I love writing books. And I've got three on Amazon right now. Um, but to put me in the workplace, I, I, I don't understand the way people think and how things work. You know, like I go on these webinars and seminars and summits and all of this, and you can win this prize or win that prize. And even on those, I don't understand all the steps and what's required until, oh, I was supposed to do that. Oh, is that what that meant? I just don't know. So 
for me, I have to look at the ADHD part of it, which I love because it makes me creative and who I am. And, but at the same time, all the things that I thought when I was a kid, because I didn't find out about it till six years ago. So I didn't grow up knowing anything about ADHD. I just started learning about it when my kids were toddlers and older. And I took the test when, when I took the test, I was 58. The uh, tester asked me, why did you wait so long? It's because one, I didn't know about it. And I didn't know that you could have it as an adult. It's something you, it's the way your brain is made that you never grow out of it. And it's not a bad thing. You just need to learn how to work with it. But I had a lot of um, insecurities growing up because I knew I was different. Didn't know why. I just knew things were different for me. And so now I need to change all of the negative that went on with that and make it really positive. And when I'm still learning about ADHD, it's like, okay, there's something new, but you know, you make a good thing. And, and for me, a lot of life was, I was happy with life. People would get upset at me because I didn't let things bother me. I didn't let things make me mad or get upset at people. And I couldn't understand why they would want me to be that way, you know, and I still don't, I would rather be happy in life. I would rather say, okay, that was a bad situation. Let's go on, find the good situation. So there's just a whole lot. That's as vulnerable as I want to be right now. <laughs> Firstly, thank you for being so vulnerable. Um, and uh, I commend you on taking steps on your journey path to having a greater awareness and leading to a space of betterment in your life. So thank you so much for that. What I would say is periods that we endure of darkness are only preparing us for times of great light. So I can see that you've been through a tough time and my advice to you is to persevere because at the other end of this time or period is going to be a much more rewarding time. Yeah. Now, how do we get to a time that's much more rewarding? Well, we can't time travel. So we have to create the space in our mind through a mindset shift to allow that to begin to happen. So what I would say to you is look at the language that you're using very, very specifically. So even around the ADHD, you know, you can be positive, but at the same time negative when you're talking about your ADHD, because when you bring in the past, and how it kept you in a certain environment, how it kept you feeling different from others. And that separation from community or unity or being like other people made you feel bad, negative, shy, uh, different, uh, th there's many ways you could describe it. And so what I see happening at the moment is you have what we call a lack mindset. So you're in a stage where you don't have all the financial liquidity in the world, which most of us don't anyway, but enough for us to feel a level of financial security and financial freedom. And so what we naturally do as humans is we try to grasp at it like this and we'll just you know keep attending those webinars and seminars and hoping that something's going to just break but right. the reality is the only thing that will change the outcome is your mindset yeah. so there's a few things to do number one get very clear on your goals so let's say this month i want a 5k month Next month, I want a 5K month. The month after, I want six and a half. 
The month after I won seven and a half, the month after I won 10,000, and then I won 10,000 consistently for 12 months. Oh. As, as an example, okay. that is clarity. Now, once you have that, here's a nice little manifestation trick to help the brain sort of get into gear as if we're driving a car, you're kind of shifting that gear. Um, is start to feel what it would be like to have that 5K month. Okay. What would you do with that money? What would things smell like to you? How would you see things differently? How would you hear things differently? And really what we're looking for is for you to embody gratitude, an appreciation of this incredible human experience you are on because we're not here forever we're all made of the same stuff and we've been sent here or we've arrived here at this point in time to experience things to help our spirit grow to go back into the ether to utilize that skill in another time or realm so i think like if you can wake up in the morning and pen down five ten things that you're really grateful yeah. for i do that already yeah okay and do you do it last thing at night? what's that do you do it last thing at night no um because i stay up pretty late too sometimes but because, so for you specifically because you like writing i would say make it happen yeah I, it's, I, it's I, hard I at night because i'm when my head hits that pillow i'm out i mean i just go to sleep that fast i'm lucky that way i guess <laughs> I, I do but, the dark hours as well sometimes yeah you know or work through the night until the middle of the morning and i know what it feels like to go i can't do this right now i have no comprehension i have to i have to lie down <laughs> gone yeah. but again this what? is the mindset shift. Okay. All right. And the shift is, what will I get more benefit from in this moment? My ego is telling me to place my head on my pillow. Or do I drive my ego away and just dust it off my shoulder and write for five minutes, three minutes, five things I'm grateful to have experienced today. Five things that I would be grateful to experience tomorrow. Because what you're doing is you're preparing the subconscious for a nice floating journey through the night to start clocking up those miles of appreciation and gratitude as opposed to just sitting there in the car park with no appreciation and gratitude, not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. So... You know, if it's really a time thing for you, get rid of the morning one, start doing it at night and just see how that affects you first okay. thing in the morning when you wake up. Um, I would say print, print yourself some checks off. Just go into Google and type check payable and cut them out and make them make them payable to yourself and write that 5k and type it, put in the date and print them out and keep them in your wallet. Uh, famous actor, Jim Carrey did that before he got his first job. Really? He got, Interesting. Yeah. He got his first job and the paycheck was literally what he had written down. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. So I think basically what we need to do is see what it is that we want with ultimate clarity and you know we have years or decades and sometimes even generations of program in terms of our belief structure our belief right. systems and to get a mindset shift you have to reframe those belief systems so it's hard to earn money. I have to work hard. I have to work long hours. 
I mean, in today's world, you don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, you can make a million at a click of a finger. Um, but it's one thing to say that. It's another thing to believe it. Right. So a lot of people that are probably listening to this right now are saying, oh, this guy, Gavin, he's come on here. He's, he's jesting with us a million in a few minutes. What's he talking about? Well, here's the thing, guys. You need to wake up and recognize, have the awareness that that is your resistance coming to the surface. Now, your resistance is past programming saying, oh, no, they want to do a new upload. They want to put future programming in. Let's not allow this. Otherwise, we'll disappear and we won't have any space for ourselves. So you really have to become aware about what is going on in your belief system, the past programming, and then how to reframe it. If you can do those three things, you'll make leaps and strides. That's awesome. <laughs> I was just trying to think too, you know, you're talking about reframing in the old program. Um, do you have suggestions for ways that people can get rid of the old programming or reprogram it to the new programming? Because it is tough. It is There's tough. many ways. Many ways. The first way is practice. <laughs> practice, 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 practice. Without practice, there can be no mastery. Number one, practice. Number two, visualization. C the actual close your eyes and envisage those neuron pathways between your brain and the external world so whether you see them going out the top of your head or whether you see them going down your spine out the back whichever way you can envisage it but literally see the belief systems being downloaded and uploaded and if you can see those, like, you know, in the Matrix, you have, like, <laughs> those wires with, uh, with lights flashing. You know, each time it flashes, as it moves, that's neurons being processed. So if you can see the old programming leaving your body and welcome seeing the new programming being uploaded and coming into your body then that's going to greatly assist as well. Um, so it's kind of like going from tubes to chips. Tubes are the Yeah, I mean, brand. in the, the old days, we had new. floppy disks. Yeah. <laughs> right? We'd put those in the computer. That's an upload. But before we could do an upload, we'd have to drag it into an empty floppy disk to get rid of it, right? Yeah. Uh, the same with CD-ROMs, the same with now um, Pentium 10 or whatever we're on, you know. It, it literally, the brain is a computer. That's what you've got to see it as. Now, you can custom make that computer or you can let somebody else do it. What do you want to experience? You know, letting somebody else make that computer in your brain. I mean, you're not half taking a risk on the outcomes of what you're going to experience, <laughs> yeah. right? Right. I mean, it's like lucky dip. Who wants to do that? Five billion people on the planet. Who knows how many in the past? Let's just, you know, that'll do. No, 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 no. We want to be in control. So the other thing is noticing if you're in control or noticing when you're in control or noticing when you're not in control and start writing them down when I'm not in control, when I am in control and start finding, well, that's the wrong phrase. You will see a pattern. Yeah. Um, and so once you see the pattern, you will have this awareness and you will go, oh, 
I just did that, but actually I wanted to do this. And so it becomes a game of tug of war. Mm -hmm. And eventually what will happen is the new programming, the uploading will win. You Good. just have to keep persisting. Good. That's a good idea of writing down when you do feel in control and when you don't feel in control. I know I did. Um, I did two weeks, actually, of writing down every half hour what I did for those two weeks and finding if there were gaps in there or if it was time that was not well spent. If it was, you know, I was busy but I was not productive and going through that. So doing something like when I'd feel like everything is just scattered or I've got too much going on or I'm missing appointments or this is not happening. What came up to that point? What did I do to change it? And how do I prevent it in the future? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. That's, that's one way. Um, <laughs> you know, writing down when you do feel it and when you don't feel it it's like being in control so this morning i did my visualization and i felt in control and everything was going okay until and then you'll have this moment and for me in the past it probably would have been driving through the city in traffic at which point I would just get so crazy and angry um, that I used to get out of my car and shout at people. Oh. It's not something I'm proud of. Um, and you begin to realize, actually, this is just the programming of your past. So, mm. you know... How do I get somewhere more quicker? You shout at people. <laughs> like, you know, uh, get the bad drivers off the road. Get the wary drivers to pull over. Like, uh, you know, and you begin to see your own nonsense that you're creating. Yeah. And literally, you are the one creating. And so yeah. if you're the one creating it, then you're the one in control to change that. You know, you're the actor of your life's movie. So you can play the victim or you can play the victor and the hero. It's all up to us. Um, it's all up to us. I, I, I <laughs> once, once I realized what was going on, I got rid of my car and I got a motorbike. Oh, fine. That stopped, that stopped me getting angry in traffic and stopped me shouting at people. I just used to smile and wave at people when they were in traffic, you know. I'd have the last laugh kind of thing. But I took control. Yeah. I said, this is not acceptable. This is not how I want to be acting. I can see why this is happening. This is my root path to changing that. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I think we have more control over our situations, what we realize. So here's one, like everybody else on this planet, I've also experienced times of financial instability or not, um, uh, not experiencing financial abundance. So it's very difficult not to be like, you know, trying to grasp at anything that will kind of produce an income, but that's counterintuitive yeah. uh, is the reality. So the question is, what faith do you have in yourself? Mm. What belief in your ability do you have? Do you have a plan? Have you got a strategy? You know, um, what are your goals? Do you have clarity around all of these things? Because if you want a financial freedom each month or, or financial income each month you have to plan how to get it like right. sitting here and just going um and being at one with yourself and the world isn't going to bring you that financial income you've got to take action right now the trick is if you take action with a lack mindset you will receive lack 
If you take action with an abundant mindset, you will receive in abundance. Okay. So what do I mean by that? Let's say my plan is to have a 5K month, right? And I don't really believe it, but I'm saying it. Okay, what action am I going to take? I'm going to send out 100 emails. I'm going to make 100 calls. And I'm going to sure as hell hope it happens. Oh, that doesn't sound very positive. <laughs> no, well, that's the point. It comes from a lack mindset. Now, if I change that and reframe it and I go, you know, right now, in this moment, I have everything I need. I'm able to breathe. I'm healthy. I'm experiencing joy. I'm grateful for this moment. Now, from that position, you say, okay, well, what I would like to achieve is a 5,000 income this month. How will I go about doing that? Well, it'd probably be pretty useful to put a strategy in place. So what sort of strategy do we want? We don't want one that's too aggressive because inevitably you miss those targets. So is this 5,000 a realistic target? Yes, it is. Okay. How do I break up the 5,000? Okay. Let's divide oh. it into 500 income slots. That's 10. Now all I have to do is get 10, not 5,000. So you're not looking at the end money. You're looking at the size of each allotted whatever your business is, help, assistance, product, whatever it might be. So you've gone from 5,000 to 10. Now all you have to do is get 10,000 of those. How do you get 10,000 of those? Well, it's quite simple. It's not for me. I'm doing this for other people. Now, what are other people going to be getting from this? They're going to be receiving great joy. They're going to be receiving a product that they need that will help them grow, that will help them get a better income, that will help them get a better family, that will help them get better insurance, help them get better education, whatever it might be. But that's how you need to start framing things in your mind so that this world of abundance flows hmm. to you and naturally through you. Yeah, I've been hearing that before, and that's a really great way to put it. And I, I do love that, that we're not doing it. I mean, yes, we need to make money. We need to have monetize what we do. But you've got to do something for other people. You know, why would they come to you if you're going to be like everybody else? Gimme, gimme, gimme. You know, to where instead of gimme, it's give you. I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you. What can I do for you? How can I help you get to where you want to be? And I think that's like with, with my coaching for the unpublished writers and new entrepreneurs is how do I guide you to get you to the success you want, to what you see for yourself. And success to everybody is different. Success is not just money. It's not just, just being famous. You know, success to one person may be, I finally get out of this apartment that's got rats everywhere into a house that doesn't have rats everywhere. Even if I'm still renting, I'm still upgrading. I want to give my family something better. Or, um, you know, maybe success is finally get a new car instead of having a clunker I have to repair every month or something like that. Or for now, wow, I won that 5000 gallon of fuel and I, and I don't have to take out a loan to buy fuel for my vehicle you know whatever it is right now but I love it because success is as individual as the person is and getting there is as individual as a person is and there's nothing I love more than helping people get to where they want to go and seeing them thrive and survive in that not not survive but um, succeed in that <laughs> Yeah. Um, I mean, living a life of service and giving is 
it's the art of life basically you know living is giving mm. um see how it feels to give and yeah. i'm sure you'll feel much better um and so yeah I just encourage everybody to give doesn't mean you should go and give everything away including your shirt and you know not have anything left for yourself we've got to be able to look after ourselves so that we can yeah. maintain that level of giving absolutely absolutely well i see our time is already ended <laughs> I wish we could just keep going on. Maybe I will in future shows, but for now, <laughs> this is what I can do. Um, so be sure to find Gavin and learn more um, at stayoutstanding.com on Linktree, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you happen to be. And thank you so much, Gavin, for coming on and talking with us today and, and giving us all these great insights on how to, to change our perspective and change the words from maybe like I'm busy too, I'm highly productive. You know, sometimes just changing our wording makes a difference. But thank you so much for being here today. I'm going to have to have you back in a few months. <laughs> I'd be happy to. Right. I am, uh, I am uh, swimming the English Channel in September. Oh, good. Um, so maybe we can arrange to do that. Uh, that would be do awesome. A, do a post-swim uh chat and i also um, see you're in an upcoming summit on peace from broken pieces on july right. 9th is that right that's right yeah saturday yeah. uh yeah. winning the game of you is what i'll be talking about so come and join us it's free if you'd like to hear more of what i have awesome. to say yeah i um, would <laughs> and i will share the link with you as well for the swim Okay, great. Uh, I'm raising awareness around plastic pollution in our oceans. So um, okay. we're trying to raise money for the ocean cleanup to clean up all the damage that we've done. Yep. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Thank you, Gavin, so much. Thank you, everyone, for being here and for watching the replays and listening in on Anchor FM. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.